Hello everyone, I hope you all will. Walking in the love and favor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wherever you are. I just want to share some thoughts. Um, and my intention of these thoughts is um, to encourage somebody. You know the days we live in, it's so easy for for people to get conflicted, you know. Because there's so many beliefs. There's so much misconception when it comes to the word of God. And um, how to... Um, and many people actually struggle with um, applying the word of God to their daily lives. There's a great contradiction when it comes to that. But... Um, some of the things I can share are, you know, when you you have been around people, um, Christians who who um, <laughs> I'm almost forgetting the word. Have you been around people who? tend to lead or to force you um, to beat sin or to change your life like you have to do it or if you don't do it uh, you're going to hell so basically they are pushing you to change your ways rather than pushing you to surrender to Christ Unfortunately, I've been surrounded by many Christians like that. I mean, even to this day. Instead of somebody pointing you to Christ, they're pointing you to be righteous, like, on your own. When somebody says, you know, and it happens so many times and in so many ways. Even when it comes to um, struggling, you know, with um, with life, you know, whatever you might be struggling with in life, you know, it could be a sit whatever situation you're struggling with, then somebody will ask you, "Hey, how are you?" And then you're like, "Okay, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not fine. I'm going through this and that," and then. Instead of leading you to surrender to Christ, they will read you a scripture and tell you not to do or not to think a certain way. And they walk away happy, thinking they've helped somebody. But the truth is, none of us is immune to, um, to demonic attacks. And um, this is because we live in a fallen world. We, we live in a fallen world. As long as you are still alive in this flesh, you will still be plagued. You will be attacked in your thoughts. You will be attacked every single day. Unfortunately, to the extent of almost taking your life, of even taking your life, you know, the enemy goes that way if you... Um, turn out to be what he didn't expect. What people never tell us, um, I'm not going to ca categorize anyone, you know, saying that pastors or this and that. No, I'm just going to say people. What people never tell us is it's normal to feel tired. It's even normal to feel suicidal. It's normal when you start getting these lustful thoughts. It is a very normal thing as long as you live in this world. But what distinguishes you from a child of God? Uh, you know, what distinguishes you from the other people as a child of God is how you deal with these struggles. 
I'm gonna say, let me put down my phone and, and uh, let me not see any last full stuff because I'm going through Instagram, I'm seeing all these uh, unclean pictures and all that. Or let me um, stop listening to this worldly music. Let me stop. Somebody will tell you that. Put down your phone, stop looking at, at, at bad images, you're feeding an addiction, you're doing all that. But the right way to deal with that is to surrender it to Christ. You go to Christ, you tell him, Lord, I am struggling with these thoughts. I'm, and I'm enjoying what I see. I like what I see. I don't have the strength to overcome it. I just don't have the strength to overcome. It could be anger that you deal with anger. It's just that one thing that keeps coming back and attacking you. Mark you, you'll be attacked by any anything. So I'm not putting anything to um, addictions or anything. Because addictions are, are basically, it's just lust, you know. Lust that overpowers you. Actually, that lust doesn't overpower you. You give it the power. So every time it comes, you've made a home in yourself. Then you keep partaking in that particular thing it keeps leading you in if it's pornography then of course the normal church will say you you have a pornography addiction or you're addicted to drugs you're addicted to but it is something you have lustfully and willingly accepted in your life so the only way to beat these things and this happens to everyone it happens to every every single human being it happens to them only that when people preach they never tell you this and you know this reminds me of um, the people who do like um, product reviews. Because the company sends them that product to review it. These people um, they'll tell you all the nice things about the product. They stay with it for a week. They, perhaps the company gives it to them and they enjoy it. But because they keep wanting to receive things to review, they're going to leave out certain information. It reminds me of, uh, that reminds me of, of uh, the church that kind of does that. They never tell you the truth in its entirety. And you know when you come to, to think of it, Christ always told the truth in its entirety. He spoke these parables that speak multitudes, that speak depth, you know, which today people don't do. And people need to tell you that it's normal to feel these things. It's normal to, to feel bad. It's normal to feel weak. But how do you deal with a weakness? That's why you draw the line. That, that, that's what, you know, put, sets you apart from the rest. So when you are a child of God, you present that to God. You're struggling with unclean thoughts. What are you going to do? Are you going to self-deny, you know, like by force? Or you're going to go to Christ, report it to him, and ask for strength. Because, you see, when Christ speaks to you, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, and you read the Bible, you're going to come across scriptures. That's why you need to read the Bible. You're go He's going to lead you to scriptures that rebuke what you're struggling with. For example... When you feel tired, this is a feeling I have personally had a couple of times, and I'm tired. I just, I, in fact, to the extent that, God, I hope you just take me. I, I think I would love it if you take me now. I've had those thoughts, but not taking my life, not suicidal thoughts. You're know, just tired. But then when you speak to God, when you speak to the Holy Spirit, He takes you on a, on a trip in your mind and if you're somebody who reads the bible he's going to take you through scriptures like yo it's like this journey through scriptures like he takes you through and um you might come across scriptures like if somebody puts his hand to the if a man puts his hand to the plow and looks back he's not fit for the kingdom and that reminds you how serious God takes this walk. Like if, if you know, and then you, you also remember, you know, like um, he speaks of Lot. 
You know, don't be like Lord's wife. You know, remember Lord's wife? She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. And you're like, yo, so if I look back, I'm not worthy of the kingdom of God. If I look back, something might, I might get destroyed. Oh, I will, in fact, I will get destroyed. You know, and you see such things, they speak to that situation. And once you have gone through that conversation with the Holy Spirit, you will feel, you'll feel light. You'll be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that I even thought that. The Lord said, I will leave you a comforter, a guide, and he will lead you in all things. Friends, we live in crazy days. We live in days where people no longer want to fellowship. They no longer want to meet. Even those who want to meet, they only meet for, for sure because they just want to get out of their house, see new faces, show off what they have. If you really had a problem, those people wouldn't help you. Look at your church. Like how many people give you a call during the week? And these are people that say they love Christ. How many people do you, who in your church can you even run to and say, hey, hey, brother or sister, um, I'm going through this. One thing we need to appreciate is the presence of the Holy Spirit. I really thank God that we have the Holy Spirit. People will tell you they love you and it's, it's, and it's not that they just don't have love, you know. It's either sucked out of them because of what they're going through. They're distracted, they're struggling. And you don't need such, such, such people in your life, you know, people who are struggling. You don't need people who are struggling in your life. Because there's nothing they're just going to add unto you. They're just going to put you down. They're going to project their insecurities back on you. They might argue, and if you stand in God, they might even hate you for that. They might think maybe you're, pr you're, you're full of pride. But anyways, getting back to um, my initial thought, we all go through this. And the reason why is that these are the precedents from which God is going to judge us. He can say, hey, if Mark was able to do this, why isn't Josh doing it? Or if Catherine is doing this, why isn't Wendy doing it? You know? So, so that when, when we are eventually being judged, you are judged on a just scale like you can't have any excuse that god was just or he was favor favoring so and so no he'll pull out that word and say everything was laid down before you but this person was able to do it why didn't you do it so you going through these thoughts, you struggling with these thoughts, you struggling with uh, whatsoever, weakness, smoking, uh, drugs, what we have labeled addictions. I used to think they were addictions, but it's last, my friend. It's last. You know, and it holds, it holds on, on to you. And last right now is like the prominent spirit in the world. Last is king right now. And um, whatever you're going through, just know everybody else goes through it. And there's no shame. You should never feel ashamed for what you're going through. Look at King David. King David was so quick to accept his weaknesses. He was so quick to accept his wrongs. He never denied. He never tried to look righteous. When people called him foolish, you know, like his wife... One of his wives called him foolish, you know, when he was celebrating with the, with, with the common people and all that. Because he had no pride in him. 
But when you have pride in you, you cannot do that. That is what pride does in your life. You can never open up. You will always be closed up. You fear what you, you fear people thinking of you, uh, what, what people might think of you. That is pride, by the way. That is pride. People, call, the world calls it insecurities. There's nothing like insecurities in the Bible. It's pride. You know, at the end of the day, it's pride that puts you in that place. Sometimes you think you're better than people. Sometimes you don't want to open up to people because you're afraid of what they'll think of you. You are prideful because you are holding on to a certain fake image, you know, to a certain image that is truly not you. That is pride. So at the end of the day, you have to know that it's, it's, it's normal to go through all these things. The problem is how you deal with it. Do you take it to the Lord? Many times uh, people have asked me in the comments, yo, how do you surrender to Christ? Do I like pour out my whole heart? Like, what do you mean when you say that come to Christ with your whole heart? Let me tell you what it means to surrender to Christ with your whole heart. If somebody came to your house and I told you, surrender everything you have in this house. Everything. That means you're going to start in your living room or, or lounge. You, you surrender all your, 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 your furniture. Surrender the, the electronics, the TVs. You go to the kitchen, you surrender everything in the cabinets, the fridge, uh, the stove. Um, go to the laundry room you, you surrender the the washers everything you have then it goes to um if you have an office in your house you surrender everything in your office then you go to um for, the, for those of you who have big houses if you have a, a kids playroom you surrender everything everything in all the common rooms then you go to the private rooms the bedrooms you surrender everything the bed uh, the carpets if you have that everything literally because what he's simply saying to surrender everything is leaving that house with only walls. Only the walls. Everything that you brought into that house, you surrender. That's what it means. And if you have something hidden in the ceiling or under the tiles, you know, like people put safes, you know, like under the tiles or in a ceiling or up in the walls and then cover it up, secret rooms, all that. You surrender everything in those places. That's what it means to surrender. So, when you surrender into Christ, you completely open up to Him. You tell Him every, every thought. You tell Him everything you have. You tell Him all your struggles. And that's how you surrender. And once you tell Him all your struggles, you ask Him to come and change all those situations that you have surrendered unto Him. That is how you surrender to him. But today, unfortunately, people will not tell you that. I have had to be taught by the Holy Spirit how to surrender. And I'm so grateful. And I'm so happy to share it with you. I'm very happy that it's, it's not too late. Like, I'm not knowing this when I'm so old. I know it now because I can teach it to my kids. I can teach it to the kids I meet. I can teach it to people that are willing to learn. That is how you surrender to Christ. One other thought, uh, thing I'm going to say is pray. Pray. And pray. I used to have a weakness to pray. In fact, I used to, I won't call it a weakness. I used to despise prayer. I used to be like, hey, mm, God loves me as long as speaking to the Holy Spirit, that's enough. You need to pray. The guy speaking to you right now could never pray for 10 minutes. But I do it. I thank the Lord that over time he has showed me, he has taught me. You need to pray. And don't pray for yourself. Pray for your community. Pray for, if you're a parent, God has blessed you with a responsibility. To know what it feels to have a child. To know what it feels when a child is lonely. 
I look at my 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 child and I'm like, yo. I would kill anybody that touches a child. That's how you're supposed to feel about other people's kids. You can't see somebody else's child, you know. I can't. No, I can't. I can't see somebody else's child, you know, um, stranded, and I just drive by or walk by. I. I'll be concerned. I'll be like, what's going on with this child? Hey, why are you crying? Why are you standing here alone? Why, why are your parents? So if somebody was was to um, use that to kidnap me, maybe they would do that. Or I don't know. Maybe they would, they would do that. That's, that's what they would use. But I thank God I pray. Because you see, if you don't pray, you're going to be destroyed. A lot of things are happening in our communities kidnappings, shootings, crime of all sorts, and it keeps growing. It's skyrocketing all over the world, not only your neighborhood, not only your city, not only your country, it's skyrocketing everywhere. But you see, you pray. Many people, when there's crime in, in their neighborhood, they're going to pack up and leave and go to another. How many times will you leave? How many neighborhoods are you going to leave? Because you, you reach a point and you can't afford to leave anymore. So what you have to do is pray. If God leads you to move out of that neighborhood, then you can leave. But before you do everything, anything else, before you make your own decisions, always consult God. Pray. Pray. Always pray to God. And, you know, be open and transparent with God. I mean... There's nothing foolish to God, you know, that you will say. Because he knows you are telling him, you're, you're telling him truth. When you're open, he, he won't despise you. The Bible says in Psalm 51 that uh, a broken and, and contrite heart, the Lord does not despise. There is a heart that looks at God as its only hope. And if you transform into having that kind of heart every day like like king david you're gonna be a winner so and you know pride is a big thing and that spirit is ruling together with lust so for me when i see people that um act otherwise that than what i'm what i'm sharing right now i know it's pride and i see it You'll see it in your in your church, in your community church where you go. You'll see you'll see the people that are there. Not everyone there in that church is gonna go to heaven, trust me. Because many people there in church they're filled up with pride. You know, it's about their profession, it's about how much they earn, it's about what they know. <coughs> they're not teachable. And besides, besides their pastor. They listen to 10 other preachers online. So they think they know too much. Your knowledge doesn't matter. What matters is a relationship with Christ. You're going through tough times. That preacher online is not going to come through. Christ is the one that's going to come through. The Holy Spirit is the one that's going to come through. Build a relationship with him. And everything will be fine. And God is never in a rush, you know. If you're in a rush, God is not your, your place, trust me. Because the first thing God will teach you is patience. All these things you will go through will be patience. I have never been a patient person. But God has taught me to be patient. And he's still teaching me. You know, even through uh, the people around me. God keeps teaching me to be patient. Seems like our God is never in a rush. We are always in a rush because we are afraid. We want things to move so fast. That's not how it works. And this patience, you keep learning it. Until the day you die. So, God bless you. And um, I hope this is a blessing to you. Take care.